I gotta say, folks, I am very glad that we live in a world where all of the disparate groups of humans who argue and bicker and fight and oppress one another um, are all basically exactly the same, you know? Men and women, black, white, Asian, you know, whatever. It's like, we're all basically exactly the same. Like, it's very, very, very few differences. And the reason I'm thankful for that, apart from the obvious, you know, ethical reasons, is that racism gets a lot more complicated when there are real differences. I gotta say, you know, past a point it becomes what? Speciesism? Far more complicated. What about the dwarves and the elves? Well, in most fantasy, dwarves and elves... Okay, as I understand it, in most fantasy, at least dwarves and humans are basically the same. Sometimes elves have a kind of ethereal connection to the land that distinguishes them, but it seems like dwarves and humans are, are basically... Like, dwarves are basically just dudes that have different cultural priorities, and also they're, like, shorter and stouter, right? They also live longer. But in terms of, like, their fundamental character, their, their you know, their life priorities, their, what would you call it? Their humanity, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, dwarves are usually put on the level as humans, and I think elves are... I mean, often elves are elevated, if anything. Elves are more emotionally in tune, more intelligent. The problems that you have is the idea of a fantasy race that, ha that has some kind of... something innately wrong with it, you know? Like, if there really was, like, I don't know, kobolds or something. Now, this has been subverted in a bunch of ways. It's also worth noting that oftentimes in fantasy, like, the perceived innate inferiority of fantasy species is a way of communicating a perceived innate inferiority of actual real-world human races, you know? For instance, uh, J.K. Sorry, not J.K. I was gonna say J.K. Rowling. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien described the orcs as, like, you know, uh, uh, what's it, Mongolian? With, with, like, Asiatic features or something? Like, uh, I think he said mongoloid or whatever. Which, you know, I mean, clearly some biases are present there. It is interesting to me that a lot of people seem really hostile to the idea that our common conceptualization of orcs is, like, racist. Which, it's not inherently racist, you know. But we got a lot of this from Tolkien, and Tolkien did literally describe them as, like, unlovely features of the mongoloids. So, we have that. Even in more modern incarnations, like, say, for example, orcs in World of Warcraft, like... That, not to say that it's this direct analogy, like, orcs equals this race, but, you know, it's definitely worth noting the fact that when orcs are portrayed in, say, like, Warcraft, you know, you sometimes have tribal tattoos, bones through their noses, shamanistic cultures, you know. It's not to say it's a one-to-one, -one, but I think it's reasonable to look at that and go, like, okay, clearly we have some, you know, some, some, some cultural biases have informed our perspectives here. Likewise, when we portray elves, who are generally considered to be very intelligent, you know, very interested in, like, construction, not traditional construction like what we do, but, you know, like, the building of things, art, like, you know, uh, civilization, they tend to have features that are kind of like a, well, you know, they're often kind of a hyperbolized European features. Elves tend to be pale. Um, they tend to be described as having keen noses, fair features, you know. They're coded that way. They're often blonde, though not always. Um, again, this isn't always the case, not in all instances, but I definitely think it's worth noting, right? I mean, an example that people don't consider to be too, like, contentious is, why are dwarves always Scottish? Like, always. Dwarves are always Scottish. It's wild, right? Like, it's so specific, too. Like, Scottish isn't a race. It, it, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's a specific accent that they're always depicted as. But one of the reasons for that is because, you know, one of the reasons for that is because when we think of Scottish people and Scottish accents, what do you guys think of? Brash? I think of brash. Um, you know, loud friendly, like, like, very big on kin, family relationships. Like, hot-headed, rash. Yeah, hospitable, but hot-headed and rash. You understand what I mean? And these are often characteristics that are associated with dwarves. Now, nobody much minds this because, you know, like, who cares, right? Like, okay, we associate these traits with the Scottish. 
and we also associate them with dwarves, so we tend to codify dwarves in a Scottish sense. Like, that's fine. Nothing really problematic there. But dwarves aren't usually depicted as being innately inferior, whereas orcs in media often are, or if not innately inferior, at the very least, like, fundamentally opposed to the tenets of, you know, modern, civilized society. Uh, now that, again, not the case everywhere and always, you know. In World of Warcraft, orcs are no less intelligent than humans. But that does kind of bring up some questions, doesn't it? If you think about it a little bit, right? In World of Warcraft, um, or Warcraft broadly, you know, orcs and humans and all the races are pretty much all considered to be equally smart. I think gnomes, dwarves, and goblins are considered smarter than the other races. You know, gnomes are often considered a smart race in, in fantasy, you know, okay, whatever. But for the most part, they're pretty much all on par. The goblins, I think, actually used to be a stupid, like, borderline unsentient race until they all got used as slave labor in a mine full of rocks that made them smart. Something like that. I don't really know. Um, Warcraft lore is weird. But it is a little interesting, like, what, what biases we have and what informs them, right? So you have two, you have two species on two different planets. In Warcraft, orcs are literally aliens from the planet of Draenor. Um, humans on Azeroth, with their intelligence, build civilization. Just think... Western European civilization. I mean, they, you know, they, they build great castles and cities and trade caravans and, you know, the whole nine yards, right? That's what they do. And the orcs, with their equal intelligence, build... Well, they do have cities, but they're all kind of tribal. You know? It's not that they don't have cities or civilizations. They do. But it's all a little bit, uh... How, how, do, how do I say? The, the portrayal of their civilizational construction is definitely codified differently. Those of you familiar with what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Like, humans built Western civilization. And the orcs built, like tribal city-states with spikes everywhere, and a lot of them were nomadic. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of that, like, fundamentally, you know, like, it doesn't mean you're stupid to have those things, but it is interesting that that's how they are, right? Like, they get to be shamanistic and nomadic. It's not primitive, but it's primitive coded. That's a good point, Aporia. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? It's not primitive. There's nothing inherently wrong with any of it. But it's coded as primitive in our sort of cultural lexicon, our perception of which things are valuable, of which things are meaningful. It's not stupid, but it's coded barbaric. Some of the Warcraft fantasy race archetypes are much more racially coded. The trolls are Jamaican. They are literally just Jamaican. They worship Loa. Uh, they care about voodoo. They all talk like this, man. You know. Uh, they literally, like, the starting race of trolls, the Darkspear trolls, which are the ones that you can play as, start in a collection of islands which are directly southeast of a mainland which contains the large cities of the Horde, which is where the Caribbean is relative to America. You understand? You know what I mean? But if you're talking about fantasy racism, like, so often the line is drawn when it comes to, like... Ah, man, how do I put this? How do I put this? Okay. If I remember correctly, it was originally planned that one of the races you could play as in the Horde, in War World of Warcraft, would be an ogre, okay? Now, ogres in World of Warcraft are canonically unintelligent. There's no two ways about this. Some ogres, like one half of Cho'Gol, I think, um, are intelligent, but most ogres are quite stupid. It's like, so, like, they, like it's like a joke. Like they talk like the, uh, uh, the me big, like that. Like you know, they're 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 stupid. And the issue is, in universe, this is kind of used as a justification for racism in a lot of cases. You know. 
Like, sometimes you meet ogres who aren't bad guys. They're usually kind of like stupid bodyguards or just like, you know, like half-wits with a good heart. But as a group, their stupidity relegates them to the position of an eternal foe. And it's justified in that context because, well, that's what they are innately. I'll give you a contrary example that I find really nice, you know, really compelling. So, in, um, in Warcraft, basically the original species are, is the trolls. That's, that's like one of the original species on the planet of Azeroth, the trolls. They were everywhere. They, they conquered the whole world. I mean, they were everywhere. Some of them turned into elves. It's very complicated, but they're like one of the originator species. They're still around. And one of the things that you discover throughout Warcraft, which I really, really like, is that they never left. The Darkspear trolls that you get to play as are actually considered to be the backwater, uncivilized trolls. They're the ones that live in little wooden huts off on the islands. The real troll empires all around what remains of Azeroth are these colossal, like, Mayan-coded cities. Like, they're the, like, they have, like, entire civilizations. They have palaces. They have golden empires. Um, yeah, Zolaman. There are so many, like, massive... The Zandalari trolls, the Zulaman trolls. There have been so many goddamn, like, troll civilizations. They're huge! And, and one of the things that I like about them as well is that if you pay attention and, like, look at their architecture and their relative level of civilizational development, a lot of them are farther along than the humans. Anyone in chat want to back me up on that one? You agree, right? In many, when you go to a lot of these capital cities or fight in the dungeons and the raids and what have you, they are quite a bit beyond the humans. Uh, they, they have, like, these incredibly advanced and intricate cities but it's mixed with a lot of traits that we consider to be kind of uncivilized, because they're kind of Mayan-coded. Mayan civilization isn't around these days, so when we think of Mayan civilization, we have to go back a few centuries. Uh, Aztec. Uh, Aztec and Mayan. I don't know much of the difference between the two, because I'm stupid, but, you know. So they have pet dinosaurs that they ride as mounts into battle, and they also have, like, weather-controlling like loci, and they talk directly to the gods. Oh, and here's another fun kicker. The trolls actually do talk to their gods. The humans just have the light, you know? Like, their vaguely Christ-like Christian allegory. That's all they have. The, uh, the trolls directly contact their deities. I think that's nice, you know? They are, they are just absolutely dabbing on humanity, I think. Uh, in many respects. Um, now, oftentimes, the trolls are the bad guys in World of Warcraft. But you know why? Because they're... They're the Imperial Force. Isn't that nice? It's a fantasy race where your first interaction with them through the Darkspear trolls paints them as like, oh, we are Jamaicans, We're, woo, we worship the Voodoo. You know, like, okay, great. But then, as the world expands, you see that the reason you fight with trolls so often in the broader conflicts in Warcraft isn't because they're just a different group of people. It's because they are the globe-trotting empires that you have to defend yourself against. I like that. I think that's nice. It was a subversion of expectations, and I appreciated it. And I think there's a pretty big difference between something like that and something like, say, I don't know, ogres being constantly made the bad guys because ogres are stupid, and therefore any time a necromancer in the Warcraft universe wants to build their own undead army, they can just convince the local ogre tribe to side with them in exchange for meat. Does that make sense? Well, hopefully it makes sense to some people. There are, uh, there are other examples of the racial codifying existing in fantasy races. The Tauren in, um, in Warcraft are literally just Native Americans. They're like big bull people, and they wear feather headdresses, and they have totems that have, like, eagle faces and shit carved into them. 
and everything about them is literally just a caricature of Native Americans, and their people are literally noble savages. That is literally the thing they are. They wear loincloths and, like, you know, like, native robes, and they have, like, old-fashioned traditions, but they're all, like, nice and wise, and, like, okay, you know. All right. Like, yeah, they're the good guys. Over, almost always the Tauren are the good guys, but isn't that the point of, like, the noble savage archetype? They're good because we have a patronizing attitude towards how close they are to nature. And in this case, they are close to nature because it's a magical world and they literally commune with the Earth Mother, so... Plus, there are the Grim Totems who are, who are the bad savages on Kalimdor, yeah. There are other examples of direct allegories. As I recall... The gnomes don't really have an allegory. Um, gnomes are gnomes, so that's fine. The goblins, likewise. I don't think the go Some people say, like, oh, goblins are Jewish I don't think the goblins are even remotely Jewish coded in Warcraft. I don't think that at all. I, d I do not believe that. I don't think so. The undead don't really have a coding, to my knowledge. You have the British humans. What are they called? The, uh, the ones, the Worgen? What, 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 what is their place called? They're obviously, like, British. The, the Gilneans, yeah. Gilneans, yeah. I've said this before, and I still believe it. I feel like the Draenei are meant to come across as kind of allegorically Romani. That's always the vibe that I've gotten from them. A, a, a nomadic, you know, a nomadic culture known for trade, uh, you know, um, wanderers, like, had to flee their homeland because of oppression. If not Romani, then at the very least some kind of Slavic. Their accents are, are pretty Slavic, I think. They weren't that initially. No, but they are now. I mean, you know, that's how they're coded in, in the context of the story and the position that we're in. Um, yeah, not all goblins are greedy. Well, the main trait for goblins in Warcraft isn't them being greedy, it's them being reckless, right? Like, the only greedy goblins usually are, like, the merchants, but all merchants are greedy. That's... it's literally their job to be greedy. Most of the goblin-coded stuff in Warcraft is more like them building rockets and bombs, and the joke is always that they're not gonna work very well, and they're very dangerous, and that's like the... you know. Yeah, goblin engineering always has a chance to explode, that kind of crap. Um... Let me see. Guys, any other races in Warcraft that you think have very specific fantasy, like, racial coding that you can think of? You'll have to forgive me, my, uh, little tired. The Pandaren? Oh, the Pandaren are literally just Chinese. I mean, they're panda people, of course, obviously, yeah. That's- that's not even- yeah. Didn't- didn't the Mists of Pandaria literally do well in China? I'm pretty sure Chinese people like those depictions, don't they? Because the Pandaren are kinda kick-ass. Pandas are, like, a beloved national icon of China and the Chinese people. And the Pandarans are all, like, super cool fucking kung fu badasses. I don't know. Does Warhammer have any issues? Maybe orc speech? Orcs in Warhammer all have Cockney accents, which is based and incredible, by the way. Literally one of the best things in the entire medium. Blood Elf architecture has Ara Arabic and Iranian influence, but their people don't um, affect that. Oh, that's true, that's true, yeah. If you look at Blood Elf architecture, it all looks pretty Arabic, which is interesting. What do you think of Night Elves? I don't think Night Elves are very, like, coded. Night Elves are just like, ooh, we protect the forest. I do kind of like the fact that when the Night Elves were first revealed, they were like, kind of savage. I kind of like that, you know? Like, elves- elves are normally depicted as, like, the fair-minded high folk of the forest, but when night elves were first unveiled in Warcraft, it was just like, oh no, they're fucking feral. They're, like, ruthless, murderous assholes. I don't even know if they come across as noble savages, honestly, because the night elves don't come across as very noble, you know? I don't think the Night Elves are noble. They're pretty damn evil some of the time. A lot of the time, even. Yeah, they're hyper-isolationists in territory. Any thoughts on Drow? Well, Drow aren't in Warcraft. I guess the closest that they have to Drow in Warcraft is the Nightborn. I like the Nightborn. The Nightborn in Suramar. 
it's not always a bad thing to have certain races coded as real life cultures, right? No, not at all. But the way we do those depictions should should be, um, I mean, you know, we sh we should be aware of our biases going into it. You know what I mean? It's not like I have a gun. I have a long-standing D and D campaign that I've run where the most explicit direct parallel that I've done is um, the Yan T I've coded as like a Imperial Chinese. But it's something that I did deliberately, and I don't think I did it in a way which betrayed any negative biases. But, you know, who knows? Are the Skaven just French? Yes. One of the recurring plot elements in the D&D campaign that I've run is that the gods are terrified of mortal races achieving a level of cultural and technological advance significant enough to let them challenge the gods. So every couple thousand years, the gods contrive an apocalypse, and they allow it to happen. Either they kill off the mortal races themselves and reset everything, uh, or they um, or they allow an apocalypse to happen. And of course, this happens without the knowledge of the mortals. If they were made to know, then that would be pretty bad for the gods. And the uh, the Yon T, the Yon T were the um, were the last like great civilization, and the Yon T were kind of bastards. Because the Yonti god, Seth, is not the nicest guy. The Yonti were very culturally advanced and good to each other, but they were highly imperious and were ruinous to the rest of the world. And uh, Seth's ultimate goal, both as part of the uh, deific pantheon and as a general, like, bastard, was to bring about the end of the world himself. So, actually, the gods got to just sit by and let the Yonti end the world themselves? Thinking that it would, you know, elevate existence to a higher plane, but really just sort of kept the cycle going in favor of the gods. And in the time that my characters, my 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 players are are playing, you know, the Yonti are basically extinct because the remaining races that then went on to populate the planet after that civilizational cycle came to an end really hated the Yonti, if you can believe it. They really didn't like them. So for a couple thousand years after that all went down, the Yonti were basically, uh, let's say, uh, the free hunting season on them for basically every other civilized species. Things petered out a bit, but Yonti are still really rare. And the Yonti that they met, um, Solcis? No, wait, sorry, that's the, uh, that's the god that he worshipped. Um, oh god, I'm blanking right now. So many character names in my head, not Solcis. Um, well, I'll ask Vermin next time I see them. Anyway, um, he was basically an, kind of, uh, an anthropologist trying to study his people. So he was always looking for, like, scraps of cloth and fabric and stuff like that. I thought that was a good character motivation. Uh, hold on. Vermin! Oh, jeez, it's nearly 3 a.m. I probably shouldn't be shouting. Sorry. What is name of Yon T in our campaign? Your BF. Vermin's character fucked him. Shea! Shea. It's Yon T. They're snake people, okay? You have to have all the names start with an S.